Hello developers who are tired of AI, it's your boy Michael and in this video I'm going to be giving you an update on Goshen Pay, a product slash startup I'm working on that's essentially a payment services for churches or nonprofits. If you watched my last video then you'll know that I gave you an update on a product that I'm working on and I shared the tech stack I'd be using, Next.js and Hono. Not gonna lie, I've been having extreme fun with this stack but before I get into the technicals, why don't we do a quick demo. So I'm gonna assume this is a beautifully designed landing page. I'm going to click get started. As you can see, I am using uh, clerk for authentication. So I'm just creating an account. And the moment I create an account, it checks if I have a registered church or nonprofit. If I don't, it's going to take me to this onboarding flow. Um, now, I already have some information pre-filled just so I can make testing easier for myself. But just to show you that my registration worked properly, you can see that the webhook fired and it captured it. And all this code is from my starter kit. So if you want to build something like this, you can use my starter kit. The link is in the description below. So let's just fill out this information. Next, next, and hit submit. When I hit submit, if I go back to my database and I go to the church table, I can see an entry was made. Perfect. So let's click on this. I can see some information. Cool little map of the address. Let me click on finances. You see here that my Stripe account has not been connected. The connection status is not connected. Now, one thing you got to realize about being a payment services, I don't think it's anywhere near possible without Stripe. If it is, please let me know uh, down below. And there's three ways Stripe handles it, right? If you want to build some sort of marketplace like an Airbnb or an Uber where there's two, uh, there's a two-sided money flow where someone is spending and a portion of that money goes to you and a portion of, go of that money goes to somebody else, right? You're maybe charging a fee as a platform, as a marketplace. You are going to need to use Stripe Connect. And the way Stripe Connect works is they have three ways of doing things. They have standard, express, and custom. Standard is essentially you using Stripe's UI and onboarding and dashboard for all the heavy lifting. And then there's some API connections you have to make. This is the easiest way and the safest way of doing things. And the reason why I say safe is with Express and Custom, there's a lot of things that you have to handle like uh, fraud detection, uh, negative balances, right? Especially with Custom. Custom, you're essentially building everything out and they give you the APIs to do that. And Express seems to be like a fine uh, mix of the both. But I stuck with standard. And the reason being is handling fraud detection, uh, you know, negative balances and stuff like that is not a joke, right? This isn't like, this is not like, oh, let's, let, let's just build this quick and like, let's see what happens. No, no, when you're dealing with people's money, um, you have to be very, very careful, especially with what I'm building. And I would rather Stripe deal with all the stuff um, that's difficult to deal with because they do it so fantastically well. Um, and worry about the flows and the user experience and all that stuff. And once I get to a decent amount of user base where I've proven that this product is useful to users and people actually want to use it, that I, I have product market fit, then I can start making a jump to express and then custom. But I just wanted to give you that overview. That being said, I'm going to connect this account with, uh, I'm going to register a Stripe payment account. So what I'm going to do is click register payments. All right, it's going to forward me to uh, Stripe. Now, I already have a bunch of accounts made, so I'm just going to select one. But you can you I, you can imagine I click create new account and then fill out a bunch of information. The reason I want to do that is because you don't want to see me type a bunch of information. So I'm just going to select this account, hit connect. Now it's going to redirect me back to my website, and I am taken to a success page with a bunch of information. Uh, business profile and then I can click on continue to dashboard now I'm going to click on here go to finance and on the finance section now I have some information my can my account is connected account status is active there's a couple capabilities I don't have and there's a couple of errors that I've made right the address on the document doesn't match um, there's some forms I still haven't filled out so I can access Stripe dashboard go back and make those changes I just wanted to show you this page But now what I want to show you is let's say someone fills out everything perfectly What is it that they see this is what it looks like when all things have passed all things are good So this is essentially what I have now a couple of things I'm going to be working on 
is the uh, for the user to be able to configure what type of payments they accept, whether it be subscriptions or one type payments and configure like standard ones. Let's say they have like a $50 a month one, $100 a month one, or they want to allow the user to enter in custom numbers, like a custom amount they want to donate every single week. I'm going to be working on that stuff. Being said, let me show you some of the code. First, I'll do the back end. Again, I'm using Hono and I'm having an incredible time uh, building a back end with Hono. I have a couple of main routes slash church slash payment slash connect slash auth. Now might be a good time to mention that this project is completely open source. So the GitHub repos are down below. Make sure to give it a star. So I have these routes. Let's go through each one of them. So auth is the first one and auth basically is a web hook. I have a couple routes, one main route really, which is a web hook that Clark fires once a user has signed up or has made an update to their account. So when they either create an account or they update uh, their account, they will be able to like a web hook will be fired and this will be registered into my DB. So again, I have a web hook secret checking the signatures that clerk sends, getting the information out, uh, doing uh, verifying the webhook. And then once that's done is I have this uh, switch case. Let me just uh, close my terminal. I have this switch statement and the switch statement checks is the user created or is this an update? And then if it's created, call the user create function, which basically um, you know, stores it in the database, inserts it in the database. And if it's an update, it just updates in the DB. And then you have church and this, this is where I can create, update or delete my church. Let me show you a quick example. I'm on my church page here. If I click on delete site and I hit delete, it deletes my church and it takes it back to the onboarding page because I have no church set up. Uh, all the endpoints here handle that. Again, you can see the code down below. It's pretty simple. And then I have a couple of endpoints where I can get the dashboard link by passing the church ID. I can get the Stripe status which was the uh, page that showed that, you know, the account is connected and then I can get a specific church information uh, or get churches like all the churches informations at uh, this point, will this endpoint probably get deprecated because I decided that one user should be able to register one church or nonprofit versus multiple and then connect slash connect. This is where all the juicy stuff happens. Connect is where um, all the Stripe connect stuff happens. Now I have an endpoint for OAuth, so to create the Stripe account and to link it, right? So I pass over the user ID, I store that user ID in memory, um, in a map, right? And then I create a URL search params, and then I pass, um, I pass this URL, I return this URL, and this URL essentially is that page that you saw, right? Like the, uh, the Stripe page where I registered all, all my information. Once all that happens, um, Stripe is going to redirect me to this endpoint, right? Slash OAuth slash callback. I'm basically going to pull out all the query params, right? Remember that state, um, that uh, in-memory state I, I pass, that gets passed. And I basically get all the information from that, get the user ID, uh, set up my data database connection. And then I update the church uh, table with all the Stripe information. So now I have a church connected, the church information connected with the Stripe information. And once that all, that's all done, I am redirected to um, the website. Remember the dash, the connect uh, success page. That's where I'm redirected to. And if it doesn't work, it redirects me to an error page, right? So these two endpoints are super, super crucial. And in the last two, this one just retrieves account details, right? So like I'm going to have an account details page where all the information regarding the account will be there. And this just gets a list of all uh, the connected accounts. Again, this will probably be uh, deleted because I want one account, uh, one church, one user. And then last but not least is the payments one. I still have yet to work on these. Um, this is just simple, basic um, fixed payments, like one-time payments and subscriptions. I still haven't connected this to the Stripe Connect stuff. And then I'm working also on a webhook for payments. And now this is interesting. I asked Claude, what events would I need to track? And it told me all the events I needed to track versus the Stripe docs, which are completely terrible. So I have all the switch uh, I have all the cases in the switch statement, but I have yet to write the functions that are going to handle the information that's given to me. And that in a nutshell is the backend. 
Now, when it comes to the front end, it's your basic uh, Next.js application. I used my starter kit um, to build this. I have my uh, homepage, my landing page here, and this is my dashboard page, my dashboard route. And in my dashboard route, I have a layout. I have a ID, which so it'll be dashboard slash ID, right? That will give me specific church information. And then all the different tabs are here. In terms of fetching data, the way I'm doing it is all happens in the util section. So I have a data folder, which is my data access layer. So this is where I fetch all my data and all of it is server only. So I don't do server actions to fetch data, but whenever I want to do a mutation of sorts, I do use server actions and I have a video talking about this as well. You can check it out on my channel, but that's pretty much it guys. Let me know what you think about this overview and this product that I'm building. Let me know what you want to see next. It's been really fun uh, writing code without cursor. I'm also enjoying building a product live building in public as they would say, but make sure to like comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Again, if you want to see the code of the, of this project, it's on my GitHub repo. You can literally go to my GitHub profile. I'll link it down below and the next JS is the front end and the back end is the Hono back end. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.